Welcome to episode 44 of our Comfy UI tutorial series. Today, I am talking about the HiDream model, a free text to image model open source by HiDream AI that has great potential. Um, the Comfy team made it compatible with Comfy UI. So once you update Comfy UI, you can download models and have some fun. I will show you later how to install them. They released three different versions, the full version, which offers better quality, but requires 50 steps and takes longer to generate an image. The dev version, which needs 28 steps and takes less time to generate an image. And the fast version, which only needs 16 steps and is the fastest. So we have full, fast and dev versions with the FP8 version, which is about 17 gigabytes in size and requires more than 16 gigabytes of VRAM to run. There's also the 34 gigabytes FP16 version, which should be better in theory, but it requires at least 27 gigabytes of VRAM. And I can't test it because it's too large for my RTX 4090. For those with less than 16 gigabytes of VRAM, you can try Guff models. They made quantized versions for all the full dev and fast models. You can try a Q version like Q6 or lower, depending on the VRAM you have. So we know which one is faster, but what about the images it generates? How is the quality? I decided to compare the models first so you can get an idea of which one might be best for you. I tested them with the same prompt and the same seed. The full model seems to produce the most realistic results. In this case, I asked for a photo of a sign. And if you look at the wood texture, the faster the model, the less realistic the result is. For 3D rendering, all models seem to do a good job if the details are simple. And as you can see, the prompt understanding is great. So you can have long prompts just like we have with flux models. For cute 3D renders, it's also great, but if you look at uh, the fur of the bunny, uh, the fast version has the least texture and the full version always seems a bit different compared to uh, the, the dev and fast versions. For food photography, it's kind of okay. I get more texture in the French fries with the dev version while the full version seems a little too smooth. For complex images with text, all models seem fine, but as you can see, the full version makes it more realistic, while the dev and fast versions tend to make it more 2D or illustration style. But I really like how well it handles text. For art styles, it seems to know all kinds of art styles, but with the full version, it tries to add an extra bit of realism, even when I asked for a watercolor painting. For this surreal fantasy scene, it understood the prompt well, but again, the full version has the most realism. If you look at the flowers and then compare them with the flowers uh, in the fast version. They look more like an illustration than real flowers. It also added some random text at the bottom um, that I didn't ask for. For the portrait of the woman, it's clear that the full version generates the most realistic images while the fast version has a more plastic look. The same goes for the woman in the grass. It added everything I asked in the prompt, but when it comes to hands and feet, High Dream is usually not as good as the Flux model. Here, I asked for a hand. And for this seed, the dev version generated a more accurate hand. So in conclusion, it depends on what you want to generate. The advantage of the full model is that it can create more realistic images, accepts negative prompts, but takes more time to generate because it needs 50 steps. On the other hand, the dev and fast versions are faster, but don't accept negative prompts. So if I had to choose which one to use, I would say for realism, use the full version. For illustration, you can get away with the dev version. And for some illustrations, I even got better results than with the full version. But overall, the full version is pretty good. We've compared the FP8 version so far. Now let's compare the full version with different quantized versions like Q8 and Q4. By the way, the Q8 version is slightly larger than the FP8. So if you have less than 16 gigabytes of VRAM, use the Q6 or lower. 
in this case, Q4 has only 10 gigabytes. As for the differences between them, they are not so big. There are some subtle variations and the Q4 version is slightly lower in quality, but not by much. For example, for this game menu, the Q8 version has a better result, while the FP8 version has some small glitches that the Q8 doesn't have. So it depends on the image. For other images, they are pretty similar. In theory, the Q4 version has less quality and could have more mistakes as the number decreases. Since it's hard to choose, in my opinion, the quality of Q8 is the best, followed by the FP8 and then the uh, Q4. As for speed, here's the speed on my video card. The fastest was FP8, and the slowest was the Q4 version, even though it's almost half the size. You'll need to test it on your card because depending on your system, Q4 might be faster than Q8, but on my card, even with other models, Q8 seems to be faster than Q4. So if you have the same card as mine, the choice is clearly between Q8 and FP8. FP8 is a little faster, while Q8 is a tiny bit slower, but offers a bit more quality in some cases. So let's compare the best quality model of Hydream with the Flux model and Flux Mania model. For cute cartoon images like this one, I actually prefer the cuteness of the Hydream model. For realistic food photos, Flux and Flux Mania have more texture and details, but I like the basket version from Hydream. For the mobile game, Hydream has better prompt understanding and performs quite well with cartoons. The Flux model missed a button and Flux Mania also did a good job. For watercolor painting, Flux Mania seems to give the most accurate representation of the style. Since I can see the watercolor texture there, that is not visible in the other models. For realistic photos, High Dream makes beautiful images, but sometimes they look uh, less real compared to Fluxmania, which has a more natural look and better hands and anatomy. For The Woman in the Grass, High Dream again makes it like those perfect photo style images, but the feet are kind of plastic and not realistic. Uh, the Flux model also has strange feet in this case, while Fluxmania seems to produce more realistic results. For the hands, the clear winner for realistic hands is Flux Mania. So if you're after realism, go with Flux Mania. If you want a cartoon style, go with High Dream. For illustration and other art styles, all models do okay, but I think High Dream and Flux Mania might know more art styles than Flux. So High Dream is a free model, but how does it compare to a paid model? I did a quick test comparing it with Kohler's version 2.0 from Clink as well as ChatGPT 4.0 Image Generator, which is also paid. For a cute cartoon style, all models do a good job. However, ChatGPT tends to add a yellow tint to all the images and a little bit of texture. For food photography, High Dream seems to be better. The Kohler's model can have some mistakes and lacks texture, while the accuracy of ChatGPT is good, though it sometimes misses realism, has that warm mood on almost all images and usually struggles with contrast. For the game interface, both High Dream and ChatGPT have fewer mistakes and all models seem good with text. But again, there's that texture and yellow mood with ChatGPT for realism, all models do relatively well, but they all struggle sometimes. For the woman in the grass, I think uh, Kohler's model represented it best. ChatGPT can sometimes have strange plastic faces that lack emotion. So High Dream is quite a good model, even when compared with paid ones. What the Flux models do better is speed, as they are faster than High Dream and they have better hands. However, High Dream has a better license, so people will start refining it, and I think it has more potential than Flux. In the coming months, I think we'll start to see more versions and possibly more LoRa models for it. So now that you have an understanding of what it can do, let me show you how to use it. You can download all the workflows for free from Discord, and then you just drag them into the ComfyUI interface, and they will open for you. If you see an error like missing node, in this case, it's a node that was added by Comfy UI in an update. 
you can't install it from missing nodes. So you need to update Comfy UI. To do this, go to the manager, then click on the update all button, wait for it to update Comfy UI and all the nodes. Once the update is complete, the screen will appear and you should restart um, and then click confirm. Wait until you see the confirm button again. If you look here, you'll see that the node was in red. But once I click confirm, it should refresh and everything should work fine. If you still can't see that quadruple node, it means your manager failed to update. In that case, go to the update folder and run the update comfy UI.bat file. The workflows are quite simple. If you go to the workflow tab and open it, you can load the workflows I created for the dev version, uh, fast version, and full version. For each version, I included the FP8 and the GGUF version Q8. With the GGUF version, you can also load smaller Q versions like Q6, Q4, and so on. So let's open the High Dream full FP8 version. To make it easier for you, I added everything you need to run in this Pixaroma note. You can click on the gray dot to collapse it when you don't need it. For these workflows, you'll need more than 16 gigabytes of VRAM. There are no extra nodes, just the models downloaded to their respective folders. Uh, make sure you have enough space on your hard drive for the High Dream model, in this case, it's the full FP8 version, and it loads in the load diffusion model node. Um, you need to place it in the diffusion models folder. As mentioned here, I click on the link, navigate to the models folder, and save the model there. For the quadruple node, you'll need to download and place four models in the text encoders folder. The T5 model might already be in your system from other folders. Maybe you placed it in the clip folder before. The VAE you should already have if you use the Flux model before. It's the same Flux VAE. From here, you can load the version of the model you want to use. You'll need to load all four models in the designated slots. There is a subtle difference between the workflows. The full model has the model sampling set to 3, while the dev model needs to be set to 6, and the fast model needs to be set to 3. As for other settings, the full model is the only one that accepts negative prompts, and the CFG value is set to 5. For the dev version, there are no negative prompts, which is why I collapsed the node, uh, and the same goes for the fast version you need to set the CFG value to one for the fast to dev model so it knows to ignore the negative prompt. For the steps, the full model needs 50 steps, the dev model needs 28 steps, and the fast model only needs 16 steps. For the sampler, use UniPC with the scheduler set to simple for the full model. For the dev and fast versions, use LCM with normal for the scheduler. So depending on which model you load, uh, you need different settings. That's why I created different workflows to avoid confusion. You can just leave them on default and focus on your prompts and image size. For prompts, I usually use ChatGPT and I ask it to generate a prompt for me. Then I describe what I want it to be. It gave me this nice long prompt that I can copy and paste into Comfy UI. After that, you decide on the size. If you have a good video card and are willing to wait, you can increase the size more. Let's test with 1,600 pixels and run the workflow. It took around four minutes to generate at that size. The stars are not the ninja stars. Some details are nice, but the hands could be better. I'm surprised it didn't recognize the ninja stars. Let's ask to replace the stars with shuriken, or whatever they're called. I'll copy the prompt and test again, but this time with a smaller size to make it faster. I got one ninja star, but it's not exactly what I was after. It took 98 seconds for this image to be generated. Let me ask chat GPT to see if it understands. Yeah, I got those ninja stars, so even though High Dream is quite good with prompt understanding, there is room for improvement.
If you don't have enough VRAM, you can also run the High Dream model in the cloud, for example, on the Running Hub website. I will add a link to this workflow in the video description. You just click Launch on Cloud, wait for it to load, and uh, zoom in, add your prompt. Maybe I'll quickly edit the prompt to add the sunset, then click the Run button. Uh, with online workflows like this, everything is set up. You just need a prompt and to run it, so it's quite easy. No need to download models, just run it. It uses an RTX 4090 to run the workflow, so I'm speeding up to the end. For the first run, it took 3 minutes and 18 seconds because it's a bigger model, but the second time, it should be faster. I'll probably keep three models for my video card and delete the rest to make some space. I'll keep the full FP8 and full Q8 models and maybe the dev Q8 model. I'll play with those for a while before deciding which one I should keep. For those with less than 16 gigabytes of video memory, you'll probably need to test the Q6 and lower versions to see which one runs faster on your card. And that's all for today. It took a lot of time to test all the models since generation is slower. So please give a like and a comment to support me. Thank you to all the legends and everyone who subscribed to the membership. Don't forget to connect your Discord with YouTube so you get the role on Discord. Have a great day and I'll see you on Discord.